Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nonprofit This Talk with me, Tracy B. Allen, your nonprofit strategist. Today I have with me Ed, Ed Trexel from um, Ed Creative. <laughs> I said it right, right? <laughs> Ed Trexel Creative, yeah. <laughs> So, Ed, go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah. Hey, guys. Ed here from Ed Troxel Creative, and I am a tech expert, also a business strategist. I basically help make your life easier by showing you how to use the tech and help you overcome those challenges so you can keep moving forward in your business. Very good. Okay. So, Ed is here today to talk to us about nonprofit tech because nonprofits have certain softwares that they need to use in order to maximize their efforts. You don't want to always have an Excel spreadsheet because that could become very cumbersome and it's kind of antiquated. When you're first starting out, that's fine. But as you grow and your donor pool grows and you have a lot of different things going on in your organization, you want to be able to streamline it so that everyone is able to access it. So Ed is going to talk to us about some things that he's done for nonprofit organization and gives you, give you kind of like his top um, softwares that you can use that are easy and user-friendly. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah. So what you really have to do at first is take a step back and look at what are you currently using? Like, it's important to list out, even if it's just on pen and paper, like, don't worry about the tech at this point, but list out every program, every app that you're using for your nonprofit, because you want to know what you currently have in place, right? So this is kind of like, it feels like you're kind of working backwards for a second, but you have to do this. So that way, you know, when it comes to the research part of this, like what you need next or what you can get rid of. That's the best part. <laughs> um, so I always like to have people write down what they're currently using. You may not know why you're using it, but whatever you have a, a login for, write it down and then go through the list. And what I like to do is, you know, at least a sentence of why do I have this? So for example, if you have, um, you know, I'll use something simple, MailChimp. Why do you use MailChimp? Some of you may be listening and be thinking, what is MailChimp? I don't know what that is. I'm glad that you're thinking that because I'll explain. Uh, but uh, real quick, MailChimp, you would put email marketing. And what's nice about MailChimp, for those who don't know, that's a great industry standard, free software. There are, depending on how large your nonprofit is, there are going to be paying options, but you can get started with it for free. It is an industry standard. People are using it in every different type of business including nonprofits. The nonprofits I work with, they have that as well. And they have templates in there and all kinds of stuff. So you really have like a full on email marketing system right there. What's cool about writing down this list though, and being able to put a one liner, you know, a sentence or two of why you use the program, it gives you an idea or more importantly, gives the head of your nonprofit an idea of what programs you currently have and why you're using them. That's the most important part. Why? Why do you have these programs? Because like any business, by the way, a nonprofit is still a business and we still want to run it as a business. <laughs> so like any business, you need to know where is the money going? And Exactly. Right? <laughs> and, where and, is it going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we have to and be people get surprised how much money goes into those um, things that you're talking about, all the software, all of the different subscriptions. And even for me in my own business, when I sat down with my with my um my bank statement and I realized how much money I was spending in different subscriptions for my business, whether it be for um, QuickBooks or whatever, you know, I was like, wow, this is a good chunk of change. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's the thing too, is that just like any business, we are always looking to see what we can add to our plate, add to our toolkit, right, of things that will be useful. And at the moment, that new tool looks awesome. It's $20 a month. It's 
a hundred dollars a month, it, whatever price it is. And in the moment that might be very affordable, but then when you actually take the time to look at why you have all these programs and what the costs are, then you're, then you have that reaction. You're like, Oh, there's all my money. That's why I can't hire somebody to actually do the work that I need done because I'm spending it too much over here on this area where it's great to have these programs, but I don't know how to use them and I can't hire someone to teach me or to do them because my money's going to the programs. <laughs> so it's one of those things that it's a great exercise for everyone to do. And it can take a few minutes. It can take maybe an hour, depending on how large your organization is. But I would encourage anybody listening, whether it's you or you have a volunteer or somebody on your team do this for you, but just get a spreadsheet if you want. That, for me, that's what I use just because I use a simple one and I put one column is the programs, the next column is the um, price, and then the next column is when is it due? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? Is it yearly? And then I put the sentence in the next column. So you kind of have those four laid out right there for you. And then from there, you can just run through that list and make everything nice and neat there. Because what happens is that uh, oftentimes you'll find when you do this, that you have multiple programs that you are um, paying for that do the exact same thing. And chances are you're comfortable with one program, but which can do everything, but you didn't know that it can do that other thing. And that's why you bought the extra program, if that but makes sense. Would most nonprofit organizations, EDs, at least the ones I deal with, deal with they do not have a lot of technical background. So right. even though they create the spreadsheet, they don't have the wherewithal to figure out that X program does the same thing as Y. Right. And, and I'm glad you brought that up. And so that's why I encourage everyone to list out your programs with that why you're using it. And then what comes next, once you've done all of that, the next thing is to look at whatever program you're interested in and ask yourself, why? Why do you need that program? Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have MailChimp, which we talked about, the email marketing, and you are using it for email marketing, then there would be no reason for you to go get another program that includes email marketing unless you were gonna give up MailChimp. Right. Right, exactly. so we have to make sure that we look at things um, because a lot of programs these days are trying to be the all in one. You know, if we think about yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, you know, like think about Facebook, for instance. Many people probably can uh, relate to Facebook at some point. Um, you may not be on Facebook, but you probably have heard of it and you know about it. And we can say that Facebook's trying to be the one and only social media platform. Yes, I've noticed. <laughs> With They're offering course creations now in groups. They're yeah. offering a workspace, but you have to pay for it when you can use like, um, what's that one I use? Um, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name right now, but it's free. It's a free app that you can use to get all the people that you're working with. You can sell, send files and stuff within that, within that um, app. But on Facebook, you have to pay like $5 for it. Yeah. But I realized that they're trying to encompass everything. I was even working with a, an organization that they had groups, workspace groups on yep. Facebook. Yep. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. Uh, Facebook's trying to dominate everything. It's just like Amazon as well. Like we know Amazon and trying to take over everything. So that's what you have to think about with these programs too, is that a lot of them will have some overlap. Some are very specialized. Some are trying to be the all-in-one. And it always comes down to, of course, price and user experience and, of course, the features. So that's why when you make your list of what you currently have, you can then look at that and compare it to what you need as it comes up. And so many of you may not be very tech savvy, and that's okay. But when you have at least this list in front of you, this helps you 
have at least a foundation to go off of. Right. Because right now, if you don't have that list right now, you're just flying by the seat of your pants and you're saying, I don't know. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. I guess. Why not? And then that's where you start spending money that you don't necessarily have to spend. Okay. So that was great information. Okay. Suppose they did all of that. And you know, some people, like you said, are just not tech savvy at all, but they realize, yes, some of the services have overlapping um, points to them, but they're not sure which one to give up or which one they should keep, or if they should get a whole nother software altogether. Yeah. When is the right time to bring in a tech expert? Well, every time. Um, <laughs> and if you can, you do want to focus on trying to have at least somebody on call. So that is an important one for every nonprofit and business, just in general, um, should have. <laughs> but with nonprofits, from my experience as well, that is a struggle. There, that's a pain point, right? That most nonprofits can't afford to have a tech person. Right. However, what we need to look at is the question of how can we afford that tech person? Because today more than ever, and it's only going to keep growing, <laughs> everything is tech. And we need to have somebody, whether it's a few days a week, a full-time staffer, a contractor, we need somebody that we can call on to be able to help us with these decisions, to help guide us. And I will tell you from my experience so far with working with nonprofits, that's been the beauty with having me work with them is that I don't have to be in the office with them all the time. I'm basically on call to be able to help them when those things come up and to be able to help them understand that part of the business. And okay. that's how, sorry, yeah. how does that work? So in, in terms of how I have that structured? Yes. Yeah. So for me, I have it where it's basically a retainer basis. Okay. And so I know that after meeting with a nonprofit and working with them and knowing what they need, then we set up a contract and we go through and we do a retainer basis. So that way, basically I'm on call for them when they need it and then and analyze their system and see what they have go through that same process that you just talked about with them that you yes. ask them on their own you go through that and then you streamline their yes. the softwares that they're using to maximize output yep and and it can look different for everyone um that's usually the the start there um for one of my nonprofits that i work with they actually just need me to do the website stuff the website and email marketing. So um, with that, what that type of stuff looks like is I basically, they send me content. I basically make it look nice and add it to the website or add it to the newsletter and then do any edits that are needed. So it's like, it's that type of stuff where again, another exercise that people can do part of the beginning one that we mentioned is writing down what you can do and what you like to do versus what you don't like to do. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's my motto. Know what you know and outsource what you don't. Because the time it takes you to learn that new skill, especially when it comes to tech, it is valuable time wasted that you could be used on um, doing things that can produce revenue. Oh yeah, big time. And I, you know, I'll tell you, especially in my area, so uh, I'm in Northern California. And we had the devastating wildfires last year. And I will tell you that social media, which is that part of tech that we all need to be paying attention to, social media played a huge part in getting information out to us, the public, on what was happening, what was going on, because we didn't know. The, the news organizations weren't able to get in fast enough. There was not like their cell phone reception was terrible. Like we were listening to the radio, trying to figure out what was going on. And we were checking Twitter and checking Facebook when we could. And organizations, nonprofits and law enforcement don't really have the tech people to do the updates. 
And they quickly found out that, hey, that's a missing piece. And that's crucial because everyone is getting misinformation from so-and-so saying that, you know, the fire is here when it's really not. And so if you're really trying to make a mark and stand out and get people what they need, you need to invest in your people and you need to be able to get somebody who knows the tech, who knows the social media aspect and can provide for you when you need it. Right. Because um, one of the podcasts that I did two weeks ago was about engagement. And one of the things that we talked about in that podcast is the lack of real social media engagement. Yeah. So everybody thinks that they're a social media expert. <laughs> I'm not trying to be shady, but everyone thinks that they're a social media expert, but posting on social media doesn't necessarily equate to good content and content that's engaging. And that's where a lot of nonprofits fail is at their social media engagement. And that's a, that's a big component, especially when you're trying to fundraise and you're trying to get new donors. If your social media stories, because you know, I'm an English teacher by trade. <laughs> so I'm all about the stories, telling those good stories, which I have a, I'm just plugging my podcast again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have another podcast talk, talking about telling those good stories. Um, but it's about telling good stories on social media so people can connect and engage with yes. your organization. And they can tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And that's how you get the support that you need for your nonprofit. People are always asking me, like, well, nobody's interested. Well, nobody's interested because you're not interesting. <laughs> you, you know, you're not telling them, you're not delivering the message to the populace the way they need it. Right. So, exactly. But, again, that's where an expert comes in. Someone like yourself, who's not just about tech, but you're also social media savvy and yeah. you can come in on a contractual basis and help them out. So yeah. one of the things I really want you guys to understand is that you don't have to always hire someone full time. Right. You don't. This we're living in a new world. Yes. <laughs> you know, where people are working remotely all over the world. And a lot of people don't want to sit in an office for eight, nine hours a day to do one job. <laughs> you know, they want to be able to live their lives, but they can still help you. And it becomes so economically feasible when you do it this way. Oh, Sorry. it's so true. Take over. Go ahead. Yeah, it's so true. And I will tell you, one of the nonprofits that um, I work with is amazing. They're all amazing. But I mean, this, this was a great example tying into what you just said is that last year was the first year they decided to hire a contractor like myself and a few others to create this really tight knit team of powerhouse experts for different areas. So I covered the tech, the website, the social media, and was training them on how to effectively communicate on social media and how to get that engagement. Because as you probably know, uh, but for those who are listening, my three core values are show up, deliver, and engage. You have the power to do all three, but you have to do the first two before you can do the third one. So if you show up and you deliver your content, you have done your job and it stops there. However, once you've done that and you've done it effectively, then you get that engagement and that's where your job really picks up. And that's where the magic happens. I always say the magic happens in the comments on social media and that's stuff that we have to understand. And so what this nonprofit did last year is they broke out of the box, they hired outside help to come in and to really work together to take their event to the next level. And I will tell you that with the three month timeline that we had, we blew it out of the water and it's because they took a chance on doing something different and being able to get those experts for that time that they needed And it took everything to the next level. And it's been awesome because I'm working with them again this year on the uh, same event for upcoming 2019. So it's like when you can do that and you understand the value that you're bringing to the table, everything changes. Awesome. And I liked what you said that you not only go in as a contracted um, 
social media and tech expert for the organization, but you also train the staff how oh, yeah. to use the tech because that's a, 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 a that's an essential component is to, for the staff to be trained. And the reason why to me that's important, people are thinking, okay, well, if I hired him and that is his job is to be a contracted tech expert, why would we need to do anything? Because Ed can fall sick. He can right. decide to go on to a bigger contract. I mean, yep. I don't hope that you fall sick, but I'm just saying, right, right. You, know, you can go on to a bigger contract. Tech changes all the time. The more you can do for yourself, the better off you are so that you're not overly reliant on Ed. There may be a time when you actually need him and he can't come, you know, but if you have a staff member that's trained to do it, life goes on, you know, yep. the work done and you move on to the next phase so that's great that you actually train them how to use the tech that you're um, oh yeah i'm so big on teaching that's just part of my makeup right. you know like that's just who i am and uh what and and that's to say that's not to say that if you don't want to be trained that's fine like it's it's case by case but i naturally teach out what i know and so and that's both in person or online you know if if someone's working, like I have an East Coast client and we communicate video, phone, email, like I don't have to be in an office. Um, sometimes they fly me out depending on the training that's needed. And so there are so many options available for you now. Um, but what's really important is just to know like who it is and what their background is. And so like for me, it's more than just tech, like you've mentioned. I have the business side, I have the tech side, I have the social media side, and I'm not about how many likes you can get or how many followers or, you know, how many hearts or all that stuff. Like, that's great and all, but that's not my thing. My thing is, how can we help you tell your story? How can we help you get the, that actual engagement on your posts and educating you on how to properly use each platform that you need to be on and be able to get the most out of it. You know, that's, that's my thing. And that I've even worked with um, uh, the local high school. I've actually was training students on this yesterday. So it's like, awesome. it's super cool to be able to help that, uh, that market and to be able to remind all of you listening that when it comes to hiring someone out, hiring someone uh, to come in and help you, keep in mind that it doesn't have to be forever. It can be for whatever time frame works for you, but know that it can take a lot off of your plate. And then you can also, depending on your organization and how it's set up, you can also have a whole um, training dedicated to training one of your volunteers to take over some of the things, right? I mean, you'll, it just depends on your specific needs and what, what the organization wants to. Exactly. And when you talk about volunteers, one of the things that I tell people to do is treat your volunteers when you're looking for volunteers, not treat them, treat them like their family, but because they're doing, they're giving up their free time to help you. But when you're looking for a volunteer, you need to create a job description for that volunteer. Yes. So you have to know what your needs are within the organization and then create a volunteer job description based on that need. So if you have a need for some tech um, support and you already have a contracted tech, but your people, even though they're trained on that software, may be so busy doing other things that they still can't get it done in a timely manner, then you may need to look for a volunteer that's tech savvy. You know, so that's one of the things when you're looking for volunteers, be very specific about what you need in that volunteer. You just don't want people coming into your organization just to come in. You want them to come in and be an asset to your organization. Exactly. And I love that you say put a job description because mm -hmm. it's a business, no matter which way you look at it. School is a business. Nonprofit's a business. Regular small well, businesses. A nonprofit too, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the structure, you know, yeah. it's. It's well, the structure, like I like to say that uh, a yeah. nonprofit is a business that has unique circumstances. Yes. Because some of the things that I do on my LLC, I dare not do in a nonprofit, also I'll be behind bars. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so, yes, but you are right. They're both businesses. And at the end of the day, the one thing a business needs to do is to run efficiently and effectively and yeah. to make money. <laughs> exactly. 
Exactly. So you talked about diff, um, training on different forms of social media. In your experience working with some nonprofits, what um, social media platform do you find to be most effective? Or does it depend on a nonprofit organization or the amount of time and energy that you put into a particular platform? Yeah, it, it definitely does depend on the organization and what they're doing and where their people are. Um, I mean, that's just across the board. You always have to look at what are you doing? Where do you want to be? And where are your people? Um, I will say that from what I, the nonprofits that I work with, they're uh, heavily on Facebook. Uh, yes, they're on other social media platforms like Instagram and LinkedIn, um, as well as Pinterest, but Facebook's their main one. And, um, and of course, YouTube, but Facebook is their main one where we put in a lot of effort and, and really trying to get the word out. Um, but again, that's because their people are there and that's, that's where they're going to connect with them more. So you have to really look at what you're doing and where you're comfortable at. And for instance, for example, one of my nonprofit clients, they're not so comfortable with Facebook, but they know they have to be on there. So that's why they brought me on to help them understand how to use it and, and what the different post types are and, you know, what they can do to effectively uh, use every minute that they have that they can actually get on Facebook, you know, cause it can be a time suck just like any social media platform. So it really comes down to knowing what you need and where you want to be. Okay, great. Um, so earlier you talked about MailChimp as a CRM and I use MailChimp and I love it because yeah. it's very easy to use. Yep. I've been on AWeber and some other constant contact and on right. support. And I'm telling you like, whoo, <laughs> I just went right back on over to MailChimp. Yep. Um, so you talked about using MailChimp as a CRM for nonprofit organizations. Is there a point where you think that MailChimp will not work for a nonprofit organization? Like if they get to a certain number, what are the limitations for that? Because that's what I recommend to my startup nonprofit clients is MailChimp. Yeah, MailChimp's uh, amazing. And uh, I don't remember their cutoffs, but I mean, they're large corporations use them. So um, I don't see anybody having any issues with having to be on there um, or getting booted from there. And what's nice about going with a, uh, a service like MailChimp, because it's industry standard, just like you mentioned QuickBooks, that's another big one that's industry standard. Um, what's nice about going with those is that you can actually have more people who know how to use those that you can pull from, right? So when you're looking for those volunteers or for those contractors, you're able to pick from a larger pool and be able to know that there's more people that know how to use those programs. Um, another tip with those programs or any program really, for those who really are like, I just, I have to try to figure it out on my own. I can't afford to do anything right now. I just need like a tool to help me. What you want to do is reference their help section. I know that sounds so simple and it's kind of like, duh, Ed. I mean, every program has a help section, but we do overlook that quite a bit, um, mostly because we want somebody to tell us and that's fine. But if you can't afford to have somebody tell you, then you need to utilize those free tools that you have and the help section, the blog of any website, those are going to be your two main spots that you're going to want to go to before starting a Google search or a YouTube search and getting lost with cat videos. Like all of that stuff comes later, right? So stick to that program and that help menu and their blog, because that's going to be the big one. And, and most of these programs will have um, even a chat or an email feature that you can send in um, depending on the, the program and the account, um, the account that you have with them, but the help in the blog are almost across the board everywhere free right there for you. Okay, great. Um, what other softwares, like what are your, like your five must haves for a nonprofit when you, when it comes to tech? Yeah. Um, well, so we have the MailChimp, the QuickBooks, QuickBooks is huge. Um, and, and that is what QuickBooks is because some people may not. <laughs> yep. And QuickBooks is basically in a nutshell, that's where, all your money is going to be hanging out. That's where you get to see what's your uh, profit, what are your losses, 
you're able to see, you know, um, what's cool about QuickBooks, by the way, one of my favorite features, because it's a beastie program. So if you're like, I'm not tech savvy, you're going to be intimidated when you see this program. But like I mentioned, this is an industry standard. It's good to have. You can find people to help you with it. And QuickBooks support, phone support is amazing. Like I have spent, when I first got it, I even spent like 45 minutes to an hour with one rep on the phone because I wanted to figure everything out myself. And they they were like, yeah, they're like, no, this is what we do. Yeah. Oh, nice. I didn't know that on QuickBooks. Because yes. most companies, you call the reps are trying to get you off the phone as quickly as possible. Right. You know, it's not a great experience. Okay, yeah. nice. Yeah, okay. and, and they I can act. I know on QuickBooks. Um, like Ed said, QuickBook, QuickBooks is a beast for entrepreneurs, for nonprofit organizations, just for people, period. Yeah. Um, so, but for nonprofits in particular, I always tell you, even if someone in your office is going to handle the books, which is making the inputs and outputs so that, you know, you have good profits and loss statements, just like Ed was talking about earlier about being contracted with a lot of nonprofits based on a retainer system, you need to have a CPA on retainer. Yes. You should never, ever, ever be trying to do all of your books as a nonprofit organization because you can be audited at any time and you need to make sure that the money is where the money is supposed to be and doing what the money is supposed to be doing. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing, finance and legal and tech. I'm gonna add, I usually yeah. just say finance and legal, but finance, we'll say, legal and tech. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need on the books there for everything. <laughs> um, and my favorite feature about the um, QuickBooks is you not only can tie in your bank accounts, but your credit cards. And that's huge as a business owner because I use my credit card for a lot of purchases mm -hmm. and it automatically gets put into my QuickBooks and I can accept or decline what tags it puts on there. Tags meaning categories. Mm -hmm. So it does a lot of filing for you and, and really helps you out. So helps you to stay organized. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And even if you don't know somebody who does QuickBooks, they actually have a whole um, built in like directory of professionals that you can find in your area and online and all that stuff. So they're amazing. Um, so you have the QuickBooks, you have the MailChimp for your email marketing. I love and use uh, a program called Dubsado. And that's kind of an all in one business solution um, in terms of you can have your um, database of contacts in there. You can have your um, basic accounting. If you're like just getting started and you're like QuickBooks is too much, it, there's, there's a little accounting part in there. You also ties into QuickBooks, by the way. Um, you can have contracts, you can do uh, proposals, you can do um, contact forms. I mean, there's so much that you can do in this one program. It's amazing. And they're really all about their people and really able to go through and provide support. And, and they have um, a Facebook group as well. And so it's just really cool. So Dubsado is like my go-to because you also have time tracking. So if you were like, oh, you know, I need to track my time, it's built in. And then you can do your invoicing all through the one program. Wow. I haven't heard of that one before. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, and uh, it's, it's been one that I actually started with them when they first started. And it's one of those programs, like we mentioned earlier, that I bought, but I didn't really use because I just knew like, I bought it knowing that I wasn't going to use it at the moment, but I knew I would need it at some point. And so I wanted to just get in with it. And I think it was probably a good six months before I started to use it. And I'm so glad that I kept it and have been using it since because it's, it's amazing. Um, so you have the QuickBooks, the MailChimp, the Dubsado. Um, another one that uh, I use a lot when it comes to just getting organized and really keeping things streamlined is uh, G Suite. It's from Google. And for those who don't know, it's basically like your Google Drive if you're familiar with Google Drive where you can upload documents and things. Um, G Suite is their business version 
And that allows you to basically take everything that you know with Google Drive and have more storage and be able to create your documents, your spreadsheets, your slideshows. Um, and then you can also have a, a professional email address. So instead of having at yahoo.com or at hotmail.com, you can actually say at your website.com. Right. So I just read this only on um, Tree Street. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Be sweet. <laughs> it's only like five dollars a month. Yes. It's like literally Free. the best five dollars you'll ever spend in your life. And I actually don't know, but um, they may have uh, some kind of deals for nonprofits. I don't know. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. perfect. Um, mm -hmm. So that's like that's a lifesaver. And then my fifth one would be Trello. Um, it's a free project management system. And this is where you had mentioned, you know, earlier, uh, how we have to move away from the spreadsheets. Well, I will tell you, I introduced this to one of my nonprofits and it blew their mind because they're like, wait, I don't have to do all this emailing back and forth. I'm like, no, we don't need to do all of that. We don't need to CC 20 people. Like we can just create what's called a board and I'll organize everything, get it all set up for you. And then when you have something, you go here and then you comment and you tag the person. And it just is a great way for you to be able to get organized. And again, it, you can do a lot on their free account. Um, I'm still on their free account. They do have paid ones, but you can get a lot done on the free account and it will save you so much time in the long run and keep you organized if you can get in on that. Okay, great. Um, I said five, but I should have said six because I really yeah. want you talk about fundly <laughs> oh, yes yeah and and um I think that was gonna be number five but it wasn't yeah, <laughs> yeah. well and fundly is um one that i specifically am using with one of the nonprofits to help with their um donations and so um fundly still new to me personally but oh, okay. they've been they've been around for a long time and i will say from what i've noticed in terms of research that I've done trying to find what platforms are out there um, for donations, specifically team organized um, donation programs. Uh, because one of the nonprofits I work with, uh, they need not only for you to be able to donate, but to be able to set up teams so that we can work as a team to fund, uh, raise funds right. for the organization. And there's really not a lot out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, there's not a whole lot out there. And I like it's a great donor management system. Yes. So you can categorize your donor into different groups, you know, based on their, um, their giving patterns. You can cater categorize them based on um, the amount that they donate, the time of yeah. year that they donate. So it's a fantastic system. Yeah, yeah. It is. And they have yeah. um, emails built into the program, too. So you can actually have, they have email so templates. When donates, yep, to help yeah. you with donations. When someone and, donates, it automatically sends out that type thank you letter, that is oh so important. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep, and they're doing amazing yeah. things with Facebook too, for tying into Facebook. So it's definitely I've a program. That. That's, that something lately. That's something yeah. lately. Yes, yeah, uh-huh. It's brand new. But they've been amazing. So definitely check them out. And I, I love their supports. I work, I'm kind of like the middleman because I go with the nonprofit and then I translate it to them and then back and forth. And their support's awesome. Oh, nice. Yeah. So from now, you'll be a Fundly um, expert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Working my way up to that That's title. That's your repertoire. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so Ed, go back over Ed's top six um, softwares for nonprofits for us, yep. just quickly. So you have MailChimp, Dubsado, QuickBooks, Trello, and the sixth one was going to be Funly. Those are your top six. Right. <laughs> okay, great. All right, Ed, I am so happy that you were here today. This was a great conversation. I learned some stuff about nonprofit tech because yeah. um, I'm a nonprofit consultant, but I don't deal with tech. Right. <laughs> and like I've always said, I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know. So when I don't know something, I need to go to the expert, yep. which happens to be Ed. <laughs> yep. 
right here. So um, I'll let my audience know where they can find you yeah. and what your top um, product is right now that they can probably buy into. Yeah, for sure. So if you want to find out more info about me as well as free resources, I've built my whole website to be a, a resource center for everyone there. Um, it's edtroxel.com. And um, the last name is T-R-O-X-E-L-L. -L. Um, so edtroxel.com is where you want to start. And then the biggest thing that has taken off for this subject and what I promote the most is my Hey Ed Network. That is a community where I actually do this in terms of questions and answers and training with everyone in terms of when this comes up. So it's almost... You can kind of think of it as a retainer because it's a monthly membership, but it's, uh, it's on a smaller scale, right? And it it's allows you to be able to ask your questions as they come up and get pointed in the right direction. So that way you can keep things moving forward. And so um, you'll definitely want to check that out over at edtroxel.com. Okay, awesome. All right, Ed, thank you for being a guest on Nonprofit Biz Talk today. And don't be a stranger. Feel free to come back another time if you have something else to talk about. I love it. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, nonprofiteers, thank you for watching another episode of a Nonprofit Biz Talk TV. Remember, there's someone in your community waiting for the help of your organization, and it is your responsibility to make sure you get it right. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.